G'day folks, Brad Perry's my name. I'm from Brad Sound Company in Darwin in the north of Australia. Today I'm going to show you a little bit about what goes into building the Pro Audio system for live sound reinforcement. Now the first thing you need is top quality equipment. We use almost exclusively our gear from PV Electronics built in the USA. They make a vast range of equipment, but I'll tell you what, their top of the range equipment is really first class. A good example is what you see behind me now, the QW speaker series. Let's have a look here. Down here the big subwoofers, twin 18 inch woofers, 3200 watts program, 6400 watts peak. Plenty of thump in those woofers. When you come up here, you have the mid range and the high range. These are QW2Fs, very, very good quality speakers. They'll handle 1600 watts program, 3200 watts peak. No pun intended, folks, but these are pretty loud, loud speakers. But not only are they loud, the quality is first class. Okay, folks, we're going to move on to the stage monitors. These are SP series. So we'll have a look down here. You see the 15 inch woofers in here high frequency over here, these fellas will handle a thousand watts program. So I'll tell you what, there won't be too many vocalists, too many guitarists or drummers that wouldn't be happy with these. Plenty of volume and good quality. I'll tell you what we're going to do next, we go to the other end of the signal chain and see what you need up on the stage. Let's go and have a look. Now we have a wide variety of microphones and many, many applications. First of all, we'll have a look at some of the vocal mics. We'll come over here, the wireless variety, cordless, Shure SM58, very good microphone. Over here, one of the microphones have been industry standard for many, many years, the Shure SM58, very versatile. Most sound men should have half a dozen of these. Now we move along here, this is a quality microphone. KSM9 from Shure, very, very fine condenser microphone, something that a very discerning vocalist may want to use. Down here we go to the AKG Ellie, beautiful little condenser microphone, specially tailored to the female voice. Now we move along here to the instrument microphones, Shure SM57, very versatile instrument mic. Over here, Sennheiser E906, a very, very good microphone, especially for guitar, amplifiers, drums, quite versatile, will handle a lot of noise, very good microphone. Now down here, we see a pair of stereo condensers, little shotgun condensers, great for making small vocal groups. Over here, a very versatile microphone from AKG, the C1000S, can be used for many, many purposes. We move over here, a full drum kit from Audix, D7, will cover pretty well any application for most drummers. Very good quality set of mics there. These over here, of course, the holders to clip onto the drums. and. No microphone other than cordless would be any use without cables. And I'll tell you what, the cables must be first class. We use cables from Audix, from Hoser, in a vast variety of lengths and configurations. We need stereo connectors, many, many patch cables, adapters over here, wire adapters. And to check all the cabling, we have the cable tester there. Some more equipment you're going to see on any sort of a stage. Microphone stands. Three basic types we use here. The straight vocalist stand, quickly adjustable for any height. Over here, the boom stand. Very versatile. Down here, the mini boom stand. Great for getting into drum kits. Good for loaded items like guitar cabinets. What we're going to do now Let's move a little further down the signal change. We're going to have a look what happens at the sound console. 
Now we need to get the signal from the stage to the console. We do this with the stage box. You see here 30 microphone inputs. Over here the outputs from the mixing console sending the signals into the amplifiers. You see here the large multi-core cable. Now we'll go and have a look at this back of the sound desk and see how it all connects up. We'll follow the multi-core here now back to the console. You see the cables breaking out here. 32 XLR connections from the microphones on the stage. The red cables are there. They're taping the signals back to the amplifiers near the stage, back through the multi-core. So let's have a look now at the front of the console. Okay, now we're going to have a look at the console. PB32FX. It's a hybrid console, analog with extensive digital processing unit. Let's go down and have a look at some of the features. As I said, 32 channels here, stereo channels there, four subgroups up here, six auxiliaries. Digital effects unit over here, two sets of effects, compressors, de gates, all sorts of reverbs can be patched in from the sand at the rear or individually through auxiliary 5 and 6 into individual channels. Very good compact mixer, good quality, good sound, very quiet. Now the signal from the back of the consoles then sent off to the effects racks. So let's go down and have a look what sort of equipment we have in here. Up the top there, Samson power conditioner, make sure there's no spikes in the incoming electricity, and at the rear distribution to all the other effects units. Next up we have a PBCL 2A, that's a compressor, expander, limiter, very handy tool. Down here, really the heart of the whole system. PB's VSX26 loudspeaker management system. This looks after getting all the correct frequencies to the high frequency driver, the mid range, and the big woofers. Very important this one. Down here, you see a bank of QF. 131 equalizers by PB. Very good quality equalizers. You can see a row of red LEDs there. They'll indicate when we're approaching feedback at any frequency they'll start to glow and we simply lower the bending frequency and get rid of any feedback problems. Okay. Now from the effects rack all the signals are sent to the amplifiers. So let's go and have a look at the amplifier rack. Okay, let's have a look at the amplifiers now. They're all PVCS series. Let's have a look down here. At the top, CS2000. 2000 watts of amplifier. That looks after the high frequency drivers. Down here, CS4800. 4080 watts. That looks after the woofers in the mid range. And down here, the big fellas. Again, CS4800s, they look after the four subwoofers. Down the bottom here, CS3000s, 3000 watts each. They look after the four monitor speakers. So, there you go. 21,000 watts of output. Let's have a look at the back of the amplifier rack now and see how we get all that power to the loudspeakers. With 21,000 watts of amplifier power, we need a lot of electrical current. What we use over here is a three phase distribution block. It runs 415 volt, 32 amp three phase. Into the box here, and we've got six 
outlets yeah, protected by three 20 amp breakers. That gives us all our power from one source and plenty of power for the job. Okay, so let's have a look how we get the signal from the back of the amplifiers to the loudspeakers. So we look down here, and you see a bunch of very heavy cabling. All four core, four millimeter wires. Over here, you see the breakout board with plugs from every amplifier. The speaker cables here, standard Nutric speak on connectors, industry standard, very, very good quality. All these speaker cables are identical, so you might, as long as you connect to the correct plug, to the correct loudspeaker, everything will work very, very well. Okay, folks, so there you have it. So, what we're going to do for our next episode is get this big rig to a venue and play some music, full noise, and give you some idea what it's all about. So bye for now, Brad signing out from Northern Australia. Bye for now.